Welcome to the Parent Life Podcast. My name is Jason Stanlin, and I'm the middle school pastor here at Fruit Cove Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. September is Highlight Month, and so this uh, month, for the month of September, I've asked the production team to collect our top four episodes. Uh, maybe they were the most commented, most viewed, things like that, that uh, we're going to put together for a highlight reel for the month of September. The first two episodes were How to Talk About Homosexuality to My Kids from Pastor Tim. Both really great episodes. Hopefully you go back and catch those if you missed them. Uh, This week we're going to talk about how to process big changes as a family. So I brought in one of our families from our church, the Turners, and they shared some of their experience. They've moved like five times. And it's September, new school year, a lot of that's going on, and we've noticed a lot of new people in our uh, area. Actually, it took me an hour and a half just to drop off my kid for school because so many people have moved into the area. So maybe you're one of those families. Maybe you guys are processing big change, trying to figure out how do we dive in? How do we connect? The Turners had a really good episode, and so I'm really excited to share it with you. So I hope you guys enjoy. This week, we want to discuss navigating big changes as a family. And as part of that, I've uh, invited the Turners. So we've got Bill and Rebecca Turner. They're joining us today uh, to talk about their big changes in in their family. And uh, mostly in our community, because we've grown a lot, it's moving. That seems to be the big change. And so you guys have moved a couple of times, right? Just a few. Yeah, just a few. A lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, And so... Uh, our community has actually doubled in the last 10 to 12 years, right. and so moving is actually one of the top like, topics or something like that that I get from parents of, hey, they're adjusting to meeting new friends, or they're adjusting to a new school or something like that, and so, so that's a big change, and with that comes some uh, mental health issues, um, just mental wellness, confidence, things like that. So um, how many times have you guys moved? Do you know that number? Officially? So we started Officially, again. Officially right? I kind of moved, from, right. not really. From Mississippi yeah. to Tennessee mm-hmm. to Alabama to Colorado, Oklahoma, and here. And here. Okay, yes. so that was six times, right? Yes. Six okay. major moves. Right. Six major moves. Okay, so real quick, um, did it get easier as your family matured? You had more kids, things like that, or did it get harder <laughs> with moves? Much harder. Much harder. Okay. Uh, would you say it's easier to move with little children or with teenagers? Little children. The, right. The little children, you can just grab and go. Right. The big ones need... I just got a mental image of like, right? come on, let's, let's go. go right? <laughs> right. The big ones take a little bit more input and a little okay. bit more involvement. Okay. So um, tell us a little about some of your moves. Um, why did those moves become maybe progressively more difficult, more complicated? I know, uh, you know some of the destinations and some of the experiences that you guys face like certain challenges that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Just tell us a little, you know, brief story, a couple minutes about what that looked like. Yeah. So (laughs) for us, right, we like to share things. So I would say all of them were faith-based moves. So we weren't looking for any of the moves. It was God leading us in different occasions, different circumstances. He used work as kind of the vehicle to do that. But um, the progression for us was like Rebecca said, moving from those younger years to the older years, having to learn how to incorporate our willingness to go along with educating the children enough so they had involvement, Mm -hmm. but also keeping them in the the role of child and us following what God was telling us to do. So that presented its own series of challenges depending on what, what age they were and what was going on. I would say this past move was the hardest because mm-hmm. the children were older. Mm-hmm. and Your our, oldest is about how old? Uh, 17, 17 right okay. now. And your youngest is about how old? Uh, 11. 11. Okay, and we've got one in the middle and she is? 14. 14, mm-hmm. okay. So yeah, parents, so th- hope you're queuing in on that, okay? Yeah, so th- we've been here two and a half years mm-hmm. now. Okay. And so I remember driving down the street um, in Oklahoma before we moved and one of the daughters said, Mama, you don't even seem like you're upset, that you're sad at all that we're leaving. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, baby, God is calling us to go to Florida because that's where Daddy's job is. And whether we like it or not, we're moving to Florida. So I choose joy. Okay. So just trying to help them see it's a Mm -hmm. choice. Choosing the attitude. You choose the attitude. You choose joy because... We're coming to Florida. All of our moves, it's been a thing of teaching 
are trying to teach by example of when we move, we don't wait for other people to come to us. Mm -hmm. It is, they laugh about how I can go in the bathroom and come out with a lady's, a, a new friend's phone number and we meet mm -hmm. for coffee the next day, mm -hmm. you know, but always being the one to go and looking for friends and not just sitting on the sideline waiting for people to come find you mm -hmm. and ask you to be their friend. And so it's all attitude and choosing. But, that, but that's kind of challenging for some people, right? Like some people are just naturally outgoing. They're, right. they're like, hey, I'll just go make a friend right. and we're right. just all going to be happy. Um, has that been maybe a bit of a challenge for some of your kids? <laughs> yes. Yes, it has. And so with each of them, as they've gotten older and we've been began to see their personalities develop, mm -hmm. it's then how do you deal with that? We have one that's very much like Rebecca, one that's more like me, where I love people, but I'm, I don't walk into a bathroom publicly and come out with a new friend. Yeah, that's kind and, of... Right, yeah. right, and so we joke, and we, friend, right? we joke about it, but then that's trying to meet them where they are and using ourselves as examples because, like Rebecca said, it's all been faith based, but it starts with obedience and then joy follows, and, and it's mm -hmm. about choosing the attitude. So, when we're talking to the children, uh, one that's more like me, it's well, let's look for where we can kind of anchor ourselves. Church has always mm -hmm. been a big piece, so when we've moved as a family. Now we're on the mission. God moved us. God has a church for us. Okay. And so that then helps us plug in as a family and begin to find where we're going to anchor and who God has for us to begin to grow those relationships with. And so whether it's super outgoing and gregarious or it's a little more reserved and a mm -hmm. little bit more uh, methodical, mm -hmm. we work with the kids to try to help them find their spot while we're finding ours, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's let's kind of open that up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So you said as soon as you got to one of these new locations, you knew, okay, it was time to find a church. What are the steps that you guys went through in your church shopping, and how did you involve uh, the whole family, the kids, in that process? Well, it changed as they've aged. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when they were younger, you know, they really, they follow you wherever you go. Right, yeah. Um, so we always would make sure before... We even would get to a new location. We did our Google you search. You did those Google yeah, search. Yeah, yeah. Looking at the podcast. Looking at the reviews. Yes, yeah. yes. Watching the sermons online, okay. online okay. things okay. like that. Um, and then as they got older, um, looking for proximity of where are they going to go to school. Okay. And where church is near that. Because we have found it's so important for them to have Christian allies at yeah. school. Okay. And so we wanted them to be able to have friends at church that also were their friends at school. That's important, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so did you ever get any pushback? Like when you would go to a church or when you were um, experiencing a new church or something like that and the kids were like, Mom, Dad, not this one or yes, this one or something. What, what did you do when there was conflict into what church you wanted to experience? So I would say, yes, we absolutely got that. Yeah, okay. And uh, because they were, you know, we're still growing. We always will be spiritually in our faith. Mm -hmm. And they're certainly at an earlier point in that. And so as we approached each church visit, we would kind of line up and sit down and, hey, here's where we want to go visit. Here's what we want to do. We would go to service. We would listen to the sermon. Is it Bible-based? Is it sound? Are we hearing preaching that... I, as the husband, feel like is relevant for my family and mm -hmm. leads them the right direction. That goes well, then everybody's going to Sunday school, right? Or connect group as we talk, to, talk yeah. about it now. Yeah. And we would have the kids come back and we had that experience here. This was awesome. And we would leave and, and we would be on a different page and maybe our experience hasn't, hadn't been as okay. positive. The flip happened here too. We came out and thought we found a church, and it, it, it wasn't Fruit Cove. It was one that we'd visited. We, we were good. The kids came back, back from the Sunday school, and they were miserable. Mm -hmm. And so the balance for us is that just like we felt like, okay, God's leading us here. In this case, it's Florida. That's the right place to go. We, we didn't really want to go. We were happy where we were. We were mm -hmm. comfortable. Sometimes God moves you when you're comfortable and you're happy, right? That's it's right. next steps. Yes. And it's a chance to, to kind of bring the kids along with that. So we've always talked about how they are a welcome addition to our family. But what we do as a family, especially spiritually, may not hinge on exactly what they want because yeah. we have to understand what God is leading us to do. And so in this case, we just kept praying about it. We kept exploring new churches, visiting new churches, mm -hmm. and then coming out with, and like we did with Fruit Cove, we came here and it was, this is home. We just knew. 
and then we followed that process. Mm -hmm. And we had to encourage them. You know, the kid, the girls especially will joke about how we strongly encourage them to do some yeah, things. Yeah. We had to strongly <laughs> encourage yeah. them to get a little bit more involved. But we knew just from our, our prayers and, and our conversations and, and the feeling, the spiritual feeling that we were in the right place and we trusted that would come forward with them. And it has. But it is very much a process where you balance that out. But at the end of the day, we know we have to do and follow what God's leading us to do, but we trust Him to bring everyone in the family together Okay. to the extent that their age will allow and, sure, and their sure. emotions will yeah, allow. Yeah. And, the, and there's always, it's never going to be perfect. No. Sometimes it takes time to develop that kind of relationship, not just with family, friends, and the church, right? Right. So, um, so then last thing, let's go over this, because you guys did something that's pretty, I would say, counter to the culture of our community. You had the opportunity to move again for your career, mm -hmm. and it probably would have been even a good step, and you chose not to. Yes. So tell us spiritually what was going on there, and then what kind of came out of that for your family a little bit, because I know you shared some of that with me as well. We did. I can touch on maybe the work piece, and I know you're better at speaking about the family piece. So when we found out COVID impacted, right, like so many people right now, that uh, it was going to impact the company that I was with and they were going to, going to be divesting that division. Mm. I had the opportunity, because we had done well, for us to once again relocate to Georgia. And every time we haven't been seeking the moves, like I mentioned before, God has said, okay, it's time. And Rebecca and I were talking, we were praying through this. The offer would have been a step up financially. It mm -hmm. would have certainly been a great career move for us. I was flattered that the company offered that. But we knew very clearly this time it wasn't the case. Mm. And that was difficult because I loved where I was. But it was, it was very peaceful, too. And like I said, it was counter to what folks expected me to say, right. expected us to do. But it wasn't the right thing. It wasn't the right thing. God wasn't leading it. Uh, we saw just wonderful things developing here with the family that mm -hmm. we had been praying about and needed. And uh, that gave us a piece about making that decision to say no this time. Okay. And even if it meant not having a even job. Even if it meant not having a job, which at the time it did. It's very scary. Right? At the time <laughs> yeah. it did. Um, <laughs> That's it, a big step of faith. It really yeah. is. It was yeah. huge when you have a household of five right. that depend on you, a dad you've just moved here who's a senior, you know, a married daughter and son-in-law that have moved here to be closer to the family. And so as the man, you look at that and go, I, I carry that burden, right? We have a tendency to do that, yeah. and we do as a husband and wife, but... It just wasn't what God had for us. And we had to, we've leaned in every other time. This time it couldn't be different just because it was scarier. Yeah, just had to obey. And it was scary. Yeah, now it's turned out well. And so, yeah. you know, praise God for that. Uh, but what are some of the things that came out of that for your family yeah. spiritually? Well, one thing, I don't know if it's really the spiritual part, but we have seen um, the children open up mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. and giving themselves the freedom to invest in relationships and make friends. Mm -hmm. Because in Oklahoma, we were there just two years. Mm -hmm. And then moving here, it was like they were always waiting for that next announcement of mm -hmm. time to move. Again. Yeah, right. and you know, yeah. when, you're, when they're little, it doesn't matter. The next door neighbor's their best friend and that's all good. Well, when you've got teenagers, not so much. Mm, yeah. And so knowing that they were like, okay, you know, Daddy doesn't have that job anymore, so we're not going to move anymore. So I can actually set roots here mm -hmm. and have friends and yeah. have deep relationships. You know, just seeing that be a right. change. But that is so critical because, I mean, especially for a teenager, to be able to develop those kind of heart connections allows more time and, and, and a greater depth, whether it's from those who lead in the ministry or those uh, who are their peer groups or their friends at the church or at school to begin to really speak into their life about, you know, who they are and to make those kind of decisions. And so, yeah, I think you're going to see, you know, just amazing outcomes from that. And, and, you know, thank you for sharing that story of like, what, what did it look like as a couple to make these decisions? Again, like you said, they've all been faith-based moves. And from the outside, maybe someone might say, well, they were career choices. They were, they were steps for your family or something. But very much from the inside, you guys have said, no, every time it was God 
leading us in this change. And I think that's important for the outcome for families mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So uh, for anyone who's listening, and, and you know, I would encourage you, if you're part of our church, you know, come hang out with them some more. Ask more questions. Just because we'll there, be there is. Yeah, they, <laughs> you can go to the bathroom and right. come friends. Uh, that's not weird at all. All right. So, <laughs> Sorry. But, it is uh, what it is. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, that's, that's why God has called us to do church is to be together in community that we can all grow together. So thank you so much for joining us for the Parent Life Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and subscribe so you can get the weekly updates as every video or podcast comes out. Uh, please share them with your peers and your friends. Uh, if there's someone else who's maybe new to the area and they're dealing with some of these issues, by all means, send them this episode. We would love that. And if you want to interact with us, you can email us at parentlife at fruitcove.com. And for any more information about Fruit Cove Baptist and her ministries, you can go to fruitcove.com, and we'd love to interact with you. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.